Hi. <laughs> I didn't know if it started or not. Hi. It's packing day. It's Wednesday. It's a gorgeous day today. It looks beautiful outside. Um, they're in there starting to pack. And I was telling Scott last night, I said, you know, we really should have packed this house. It, we could have done it. Everything is so cleaned out. You know, everything is so... You know what? I just did a walkthrough with them of stuff to pack. Couldn't believe how much stuff there is. Just normal living things. And the walls. My London wall, you know, there's so many things on it. So anyway, I'm so glad they're here. I'm so glad they're packing. Um, what else? Oh, let me tell you about the two disasters we had we've had since we since Scott got home about a month about a week ago I had to add water to the pool and that's pretty normal in the middle of the wind, uh, summer when you have a lot of evaporation sometimes you have to add a little bit of water and the way you know you need water is if it starts making this gurgly sound when it's circulating so I threw the hose in added water for about 45 minutes turned it off went about my day and that would usually last at least you probably wouldn't have to, unless it was not one drop of rain for three weeks, you wouldn't have to add water again. Two days later, it was gurgling again. And I went, oh my gosh, does this pool have a leak? I was so nervous. I just put more water in and hoped for the best. Well, then Scott gets home and about four days later, it gurgled again. And I, I said, honey, there's something I haven't told you. I think the pool has a leak. And he's like, what? So anyway, long story short, he goes out by the equipment and a hose had split somewhere over there and um, water was just spewing everywhere. But it's on the side of the house over there where we never go, so we never even knew it. And so um, as it was circulating, it was spewing water out. That's why we were losing water. So he fixed it for about $1.50. So that was amazing. He went and got a little piece of a hose at Ace Hardware and stuck it on and it's perfect. Well, then yesterday we came home, Lexi and I came home from the tasting, which was fabulous, by the way, it was so yummy. And um, we're in the garage. Now this is y'all two days before we close, day and a half. We close tomorrow at noon. We're standing in the garage, the garage door is shut and we're discussing what stuff she might take, some shelves and stuff that we were about to take to Goodwill. And my son-in-law had just been over getting stuff out of the freezer. So he had just gotten in his car and we're standing, we close the door and we're standing in the garage and we hear the loudest bang on the garage door that you can even imagine. And the whole room vibrated. And we both looked at each other, we screamed because it was so loud. And I said, oh my gosh, Craig must have just hit your car into the garage door why he would do that there's no reason he would probably have it in reverse when he was leaving my driveway but he was right behind Lexi's car so that's all I could think so we go running as we're thinking this and we and Scott goes what the heck was that so he comes in there and I found it the garage door spring at the very top was I didn't ever notice that there was even a spring there but I saw this gap in the spring and I went is that what happened? And Lexi said, that's it. Because I saw, she said, I saw something hit the door, but I couldn't tell what it was in the spring. You know how strong a garage door spring is? So, oh my gosh, we're just looking at each other. And this is at six o'clock last night. And we're just looking at each other like, are you serious? I can't even believe this. So of course, garage door wouldn't open with the opener. You could open it physically, but we still had to fix it. I mean, these people are expecting a garage door opener, right? And a garage that's functioning. Well, Lexi texts her um, call and her fiance real quick just to tell him the news. And he goes, oh, I know a garage door guy. Gives us the name and number, calls him. He comes in 30 minutes and he fixes it. It was $200, which we considered that extremely reasonable considering that we were thinking, what are we gonna do? So that's it for today. All we're gonna do is sit around, try to get internet at our new house and direct the packers as we can. Um, they're going to be here a while because there's so much stuff on the walls. But, um, yeah, I slept really good last night. I don't know if y'all care about that, but I'm not, I'm not overwhelmed at all. So this is awesome. I think I was more overwhelmed thinking about today than actually being in today. So, of course, I'm not the one making all the dump runs. 
and the Goodwill runs. Scott's going to probably do about four of those today. So, and I'll stay here in the air conditioning, making sure the packers pack the proper things. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, the 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 physical movers come tomorrow. I'll I'll have to video them exact uh, doing the truck and stuff just for a minute. But um, we're sleeping here tonight. They're leaving our beds up till in the morning and then we move over to Lexi's apartment. So that's it for the update. Um, I'm gonna miss my pool so bad, y'all. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss my view. I have nothing at the new house like this. But you know what? Change is good, change is interesting, and nothing is forever. So if I go crazy in six or seven years that I need a view and a big yard again, that's what we'll go get. So that's it, talk to you later, bye.